the best CEOs that I've worked with get that they have to go beyond the boxes and lines of the org chart and try to align all elements of the operating model to executing the strategy. So not just structure, but accountabilities, individual decision rights and KPIs to management forms and the management processes, how to make that work really effectively to make the right decisions on resource allocation and getting people to focus on the metrics that really matter, all the way to ways of working, the right behaviors and the way people need to collaborate across the organization, role modeled by the top leaders in the organization. The operating model acts as the bridge between strategy and execution. And if the operating model is not explicitly designed to focus on the strategic priorities of the business, the execution will hit major roadblocks. The crucial first step in designing the operating model is actually translating the strategy into a set of, say, seven to 10 design principles that basically say, what does this organization need to do to deliver the strategy? They essentially become a set of objective criteria that you and your leadership teams can use to evaluate the different operating model options that are on the table. In my experience working with CEOs, I've seen that there are two powerful reasons to use design principles. One is it really focuses everyone on what matters most in designing the organization. The fact is you can't design an organization to optimize for everything. The second is they really help to align a leadership team. And it takes what can be a very subjective and emotionally charged discussion and turn it into a very fact-based dialogue. So design principles basically translate strategy into the requirements that the operating model has to deliver. Let me just explain what typically CEOs find are useful design principles. Defining what matters most to defining value in the business. You want to make sure you're designing the organization to optimize the couple of things that are really going to drive value in the business. Another design principle is defining what are the two to four distinctive capabilities that the organization must support. These are the capabilities that will distinguish your company in, in executing its strategy. And you have to make sure the organization is going to support those repeatable models and how things are actually delivered. We also find it's very helpful to call out the critical decisions that really matter week in and week out to deliver the strategy. You know, as it turns out, you can draw your organizational seams anywhere, um, but some seams will make it more difficult for a decision to get made across the company. So by understanding what the decisions are that matter most, you can make sure you're putting the organizational boundaries in the right place to facilitate making the most important decisions. It's also very important to call out opportunities for cost, customer, and capability sharing across your businesses. This is really important as you think about operating model design to know where to draw the right boundaries, where to put P&Ls, how to define the right accountabilities to make sure you're able to leverage the right sharing across the organization. Another flavor of design principle is actually articulating the organizational strengths and weaknesses that are important to call out in designing the new operating model. One of my favorite situations recently was a CEO who really felt that the entrepreneurial mindset of his company had got them to where they got to. And he wanted to make sure, regardless of the new model and what other things they were optimizing for, that entrepreneurial mindset was still at the center. An important part of operating model design is defining the role of the center. And as I've worked with CEOs, I've admired those who go beyond just defining what the center should do, but also get into thinking about how the center should engage the businesses. Some CEOs prefer to have more of a mandated controlling approach with very clear um, guidelines that the businesses really need to follow to be able to deliver value for the business. Others take more of a hands-off attitude, feeling that the businesses should have that local autonomy and the ability to be accountable and decide what to opt into.